Hey guys, Hamsterwool here with a new video and welcome to my hunter here on the TBC private server that is Netherwing and also welcome to the final episode before we step through the dark portal. And while we put gearing up our hunter on pause in our previous episode for some chill autumn vibes in Ashara, in this video we'll go over a bunch of quests right here in the hinterlands for some extra gold and obviously some more upgrades. So where do we start? Well right next to this ogre who gives us the quest large lunch. We're doing this mainly for the money and the picnic basket, more on that later. Also we're going to accept both the Snap Jaws and Gamarita quests because these two are easy to do and give us a green fishing pole as well, which I don't care about but it vendors for a nice price so that's definitely worth it. And then the gist of the quests here, as we're going to do pretty much all of the quests that involve an outside dungeon called Jinth Alor. Yes, this area, which used to be nothing but elites in vanilla, was nerfed in TBC and now you can pretty much solo it. But the rewards are still that of what you get out of a group quest, as we can get this pretty nice blue necklace and also this awesome trinket. Look at that, 20 attack power and 10 hit rating. That's good stuff. So off we go first to do the quest outside of Jinth Alor. First we kill some snap jaws which go down without a sweat. And it seems someone else was killing these two, but didn't skin them, so once again, free money for me to pick up. Then we tackle Gamarita. Again, this in vanilla used to be an elite, but now he's not elite and pretty easy to kill. And then we're off to get large lunch. We click the basket and three mobs appear. But with some clever use of my pet and feign death, I can just focus on one of them. And there we go, we got large lunch. So let's hand in this small batch of quests. First both Snapjaw quests for some nice extra gold and then large lunch. Now this basket that we get has a chance of dropping some pretty nice greens that can either serve as an upgrade or for some more money. So drum roll please. And there we go, a green mace and a pair of boots. Which is definitely not bad and again a nice little bit of gold from my hunter. Anyway, time for the meat and potatoes of this episode, which is Jintha Allure. We head up and start taking names, killing troll after troll, slowly but surely completing every quest I have here. We scour around the area looking for these vessels, which I need 10 of in total. We battle our way through many mobs to find the two skulls for the separation anxiety quest, and eventually we get to the top of this outside dungeon. It is there that we find Elder Torn Tusk chained to this altar. So we head into the cave and go all the way to the end to find Hitaya the Keeper to get the key in order to free Torrent Tusk. After we get the key, we go outside and there we go, Elder Torrent Tusk is freed. And last but not least, we kill a few remaining mobs and then it's time to hand in all of those quests. So here we are at Reven Tusk Village and we start with handing in the Separation Anxiety quest. Nothing I can wear as a reward, but still good experience. And then we head to the top of the inn to get our juicy rewards, including a brand new bow, a pretty decent blue necklace, and that sweet trinket with 20 attack power and 10 hit rating. So it took us a while to do this, but it was totally worth it, with several gear upgrades, a good amount of XP, and some decent money to boot. But that is not the end of our preparations, because we're not quite high enough level yet to go to the Outlands. So off we go to Felwood to kill a bunch of furbox to gain reputation with the Timber Maw, but more importantly to get a new headpiece, with this item having 17 stamina and 1% crit. And because we did this quest, we are unfriendly with the Timber Maw, and we can run through the cave without having to fight a whole bunch of mobs. So at the end of the cave, we start doing a few more quests in Winter Spring. Now the most important quest I want to focus on is a quest chain that involves more of the furbox here. It requires us to go back to Felwood to kill some Toxus Horrors and talk to the Nova Snowden a few times. But eventually we are ordered to kill Hive Chief Winterfall. And so we hunt him down and since he's not elite he goes down pretty easily as well. We also get this quest item, the crudely written log, which will give us a very nice reward. More on that later. And then we return to the Nova Snowden and hand in the quests and we get a really nice chest piece with 6 intellect 10 stamina and 20 agility. Definitely not too bad. But the cherry on top is the reward from the cruelly written log. So off we go to Felwood to talk to Kellogg Skykeeper. And look at that. A blue trinket with a massive 50 attack power. I don't know about you, but that's some way to boost my character's damage quite significantly. 
And last but definitely not least, I got a mail from a person by the name of Thaladore, who wrote me a nice letter and gave me a pretty cool green headpiece as well. Thaladore, big thanks for the kind words and the item. And well, that's it. Our hunter, after some preparations and gear upgrades, is ready to step through the dark portal. We've come quite far after we started this whole gearing up journey. I started with barely 400 attack power, and yes, that's also because I was in my mid-30s, but still, I ended up with more than 600 attack power, a decent amount of crit, and also a decent amount of stamina. So, let's just hope that all this will make me a bit less of a free honor kill in the Outlands. So for now, we'll end the journey of my little turn hunter here. The next time you'll see this hunter, I'll be at the Dark Portal. And from there on out, we're going to hunt for some really awesome TBC starter gear that will give me a massive jump in damage. But for now, I want to thank you for watching this video. I'm Hamster Wheel and have a good one.